we will now go to the most important part of the chapter that is unilateral relief under section 91 whenever there is non cooperation between the two governments or in other words that government is not willing to sit with our government and enter into an agreement or in case we sat also across a table but we could not agree on terms and conditions and therefore there is no double taxation avoidance agreement between the two of them in such a case what will happen to your tax liability in that country unfortunately we will not be able to do anything about it but government of india will come forward and subject to the calculations specifically given under section 91 of the act government of india will provide you relief under section 90 so this relief will be provided by government of india as per specific calculation given under section 91 when we were doing bilateral relief under section 90 or 90a the calculation of relief was dependent from agreement to agreement but here we do not have to go and read any agreement because this calculation has been given to us in section 91 how government of india will give you relief and let me also tell you 99 percent chances of question coming in chapter double taxation relief will be on section 91 because this is given in the act which you are supposed to know if they ask you a question on bilateral relief that is agreement between the two governments then they have to give you what is written in the agreement because agreements are not a part of our syllabus and therefore this automatically becomes the most important part of the chapter in order to get unilateral relief as per the calculation which is given under section 91 first you will have to satisfy certain conditions and if you don't satisfy these conditions there is no question of any calculation of relief there won't be any relief relief will be given only if you satisfy these conditions so our first step cannot be to go and learn the conditions uh, cannot be to go and learn the calculation our first step is to learn the condition and if we know the conditions then only we can go and learn the calculation so what are the conditions to get relief honestly speaking they have given four conditions over here how many conditions four only the first condition is actually a condition condition number two three four are not conditions they are comedy when i will tell you the conditions you will realize how stupid those conditions are if at all there is something that matters if at all there is something which is relevant to give you unilateral relief under section 91 the only thing that you need to do in order to get unilateral relief is that the assessee has to be a resident the only thing that matters is assessee has to be a resident the only relevant condition is assessee has to be resident wait i am going to give you two three four i am going to give you condition two three four but condition two three four are a waste of time you will laugh at them the only condition the only thing that matters the only condition that is applicable is that assessee has to be a resident this benefit will be available only to resident assessees now please listen to me very very carefully it is very easy for me to tell you it is a stipulated condition you mind your own business and this is a condition which you have to learn but i always say this in class to my students nothing is bigger than logic if you know the reason the logic behind the provision then remembering the provision is going to be very very easy for you and i have enough logic to explain to you why unilateral relief will be available only to residents or in other words non-resident will not get unilateral relief understand the reason please globally there are two principles of levy of tax is what we have repeatedly discussed in this chapter principle of residence principle of source obviously here the assessee is resident in india that means can i say his source of income will be outside india and we are so happy with such a person please understand what is a resident doing he has source outside india therefore he must have earned income outside india and that money he will bring in india most welcome but problem is we will take tax on the basis of principle of residence that government will take tax on the basis of principle of source same person on the same income is getting taxed twice double taxation is arising and therefore we should give relief if there was an agreement between that government and our government we would have given relief as per the agreement 
बट बिकॉज देर इज नो अग्रीमेंट अनफॉर्चुनेटली वी विल नॉट बी एबल टू डू एनीथिंग अबाउट वॉट दैट गवर्नमेंट हैज चार्ज यू सो यू विल हैव टू पे दैट टैक्स एंटायरली कंप्लीटली completely and entirely you will have to pay that tax and then come to india what we will do is to encourage bringing of money from foreign countries we will give you some relief from your indian tax liability and that is going to be unilateral relief in the absence of cooperation in the absence of an agreement government of india will reduce the indian tax liability that is unilateral relief under section 91 imagine if the assessee was a non resident please understand if the assessee was a non resident we are not giving him unilateral relief correct because the main condition the only condition is that to get unilateral relief you are required to be a resident what is the logic behind that what is the reason behind that please understand non resident means in india he must be having principle of source because principle of residence cannot apply to non residents very simple that means understand he is an outsider who is earning in india earning in india and taking away the money from india on the basis of principle of source there will be some tax if your government was sitting with us we would have reduced your tax liability and given you relief as per the agreement between us and your government but your government is not sitting with us then go kill yourself and kill your government when you go from india buy a stool and a rope hang yourself from a fan and kill yourself but you will have to pay the tax share of the indian land the land which generated the income for you we really do not care about non residents where your government is not willing to sit with us and therefore unilateral relief will be available only and only to resident unilateral relief will not be available to non resident this is the only condition this is the most important condition yes i am going to make you write condition number 2 3 and 4 but they are not conditions they are only comedy they are only time pass waste of time let us see what are the condition what is the primary condition that only thing which matters assessee has to be a resident second condition the assessee should earn income outside india you should be having income outside india wow wow if you are resident in india double taxation can happen only if sources outside india otherwise double taxation will not happen there is the question of relief relief can happen only if there are incomes earned in uh, there is tax paid in two countries so you are resident in india that means source has to be outside india this condition has already been satisfied when we check if double taxation is taking place already satisfied third condition again very funny you should have paid tax outside india that means this income that you have earned outside india should be taxable in that country sometimes some countries don't levy income tax if that income has not suffered income tax that means you have not suffered double taxation you won't get relief but then again when we were checking if double taxation has happened same person same income paying tax twice this income in india on the basis of residence and that government on the basis of source automatically when we were checking whether double taxation has taken place we have already satisfied this and this both conditions even when we were checking if double taxation has taken place even before we came to relief and the last condition is that there should not be any double taxation avoidance agreement between india and that country there should not be any dtwa wow wow it is like saying listen assessi listen dear assessi listen if you have an agreement between the two governments we will not give you unilateral relief wow so don't give me unilateral relief i can obviously go and take which relief i can obviously take which relief bilateral if there is already an agreement i will take bilateral relief dear dear student please understand the assessi does not need unilateral relief if there is an agreement because he must have already taken bilateral relief that means obviously the fact that we have come to check whether unilateral relief is going to be available 
if we want to check this obviously there is no dtwa because if there was dtwa then we would have taken bilateral relief obviously there is no dtwa and because there is no dtwa we will be getting unilateral relief effectively how many conditions do we have in order to get relief first SAC has to be resident second there has to be income outside india third you should have paid tax outside india and fourth there should not be any agreement between india and that country because if there is an agreement in that case in that case you will go for bilateral relief but i will repeat it for the last time that honestly there is only one condition conditions two three and four are not actually conditions they are a comedy they are a waste of time so then now that we have understood the condition and the logic the reasoning why only residents are eligible let us understand calculation of unilateral relief this is an extremely important discussion extremely important whether you are in old syllabus or new syllabus in new syllabus this is a part of 30 marks international tax and every word that i am teaching you here is applicable in 100 marks elective paper international tax also this is very very important let us understand the concept of unilateral relief with two examples first i will do an easy example then i will go to a difficult a more complicated example first example mr x who is a resident age 35 years why is age relevant obviously tax slabs depend upon age of the assessee so mr x resident age 35 years is giving you his income details he has got income earned in india rupees 8 lakhs and he has got income earned in a country country a 5 lakh indian income 8 lakh country a 5 lakh and this income in country A, he has paid 20% tax. Country A is taxing him on this income at a rate of 20%. So on that 5 lakh in that country, country A, he has already paid 20% tax on the basis of principle of source. Because in India, he is resident, but he has source over there. 5 lakh rupees has been taxed at a rate of 20%. And the sad part of the life of Mr. X is that India does not have a double taxation avoidance agreement with country A. So there is no DTWA. And now we have been given a task to calculate unilateral relief and we will do that in this sum. This is an example. Before you give relief, you need to first check has double taxation taken place. Because if double taxation only has not taken place, there is no question of any relief. Check. Let's talk about 8 lakh. Can I say residence is in India? Source is also in India. 8 lakh will be taxable only in India. And therefore, there is no double taxation till now. Now, let's talk about 5 lakh. Residence in India. So taxable on the basis of principle of residence. Source in country A. Taxable on the basis of principle of source. Same person, same income getting taxed twice. One country on the basis of residence. Other country on the basis of source. Can I say this time double taxation has taken place? And if double taxation has taken place, then only there is question of relief. So you are now required to provide relief. Then provide no. Go provide bilateral relief. Go provide bilateral. You can't. Why? Why can you not give bilateral relief? What is the reason why it is not possible to give bilateral relief? Because there is no DT double. And when there is no DT double between the two countries, then we are left with only one option. Which option? Unilateral relief. And for unilateral relief, now you need to check only one thing, only one thing which matters, only one thing which is relevant that the SAC has to be a resident. The only thing that matters, check is the SAC resident. Yes, please listen. The other three conditions are already and automatically checked. Already checked, automatically checked. The remaining three conditions have already been checked and have been automatically checked when we were checking has double taxation taken place 
Has double taxation taken place? Yes, because income outside India. Because tax outside India. And there won't be bilateral relief because no DTAA. These things we have already checked even before we came to relief. And this is why, this is why, this is why we say that the only condition that matters is that a CSE has to be a resident. This is why I said that unilateral relief, you have to check only one thing, resident, everything else is automatically taken care of. So have you understood now that SSE is eligible till now I have not taught you the calculation. Now is the time when we will go and learn what is the calculation of unilateral relief. How is unilateral relief going to be provided under income tax? I have got two options with you here. Option one, I can give you steps. Step one, two, three, four, five, six. Step number six is an answer. I can, it is very easy for me, but it is not good in the interest of the student because the student should know the reason. If you know the reason, then if the sum changes, if they ask you something else, you will be able to do everything. The concept should be clear. The objective, remember, now that you have chosen this full 100% English course, which is specifically designed for students of South India, we are specially recording this 100% English course only for South students. When you have chosen this full syllabus course, Please understand, objective is never going to be to bring answer to this question. If I have to bring answer to this question, I can solve it in a few minutes. I want you to understand the reason, the logic behind the provision, the logic behind the calculation. And if you know that, even if the number changes, you will still do well. You will still get the right answer. And that is what I am going to do. Understand what is the whole idea behind calculation of unilateral relief. First of all, country A has taken 20% tax on 5 lakh. With respect to which government of India will not be able to do anything. Why am I saying this? This is the reason. We can't do anything. Government of India is going to take tax from you on 13 lakh rupees because this is also taxable income and on the basis of principle of residence, 5 lakh is also taxable. So normally, government of India is going to take how much tax from you? Tax on 13 lakh as per applicable tax rates. Correct or no? But because out of that 13 lakh, 5 lakh has already been subjected to taxation in another country. What the government of India will do for you? They will say, do one thing, find out your Indian tax liability and find out the foreign tax liability. Foreign tax will always be readily given to you in the question. You don't have to use your brain. Only your calculator you have to use. Brain not required, only calculator required. Foreign tax is going to be given to you in the question. You have to use your brain to calculate Indian tax liability. For which you will have to calculate total income. So you have to calculate total income. You have to calculate total tax liability. And finally we will compare your Indian tax and your foreign tax. The tax over here or tax over there, whichever is lower will be your relief. This is the idea. This is the calculation. Indian tax or foreign tax, whichever is lower. Supposingly, just an example, India is taking 30 rupees tax and that government is taking 40 rupees tax. 30 in India, 40 in that country. We cannot do anything about 40. We cannot do anything about 40. Why we cannot do anything about 40? Because there is no agreement. So what government of India is doing? They are giving you relief against your Indian tax of 30 rupees. What will they do? Calculate. Whichever is lower, 30, don't pay anything in India. You cannot take benefit of 40 and take refund of 10 in India. No. So whichever is lower. And if it was the other way around, supposingly that government is taking 30 and India is taking 40, then what will government of India say? Whatever you have paid over there, reduce from your Indian tax. There is no agreement. So this is not bilateral relief. This is not tax credit method. But calculation is somewhat similar. That tax over here or tax over there, whichever is lower, will become your relief. This is the logic. Indian tax or foreign tax, whichever is lower. How are we going to calculate? Let's see the steps also. Because logic is important, but we have to solve it also. First step, every time you want to calculate tax. See, foreign tax you can do in one calculation. That is, that is going to be very easy. First step, you have to also calculate Indian tax. And if you have to calculate Indian tax, you will have to first calculate your net taxable total income 
in India, which in our example will come to rupees 13 lakh. Reason is 8 lakh and 5 lakh both are going to be taxable. Resident has to pay tax on world income. This is why double taxation has arisen. Net taxable total income in India is going to be rupees 13 lakh. On this 13 lakh rupees, you are required to calculate tax liability in India. Tax liability in India on 13 lakh rupees. Now, while doing this, please assume that there is no relief. Normally, if there was no, no relief, what tax government of India will take from you? Suppose, of, of course, we know that there is relief and that is what we have to calculate. But if there is no relief, what is going to be your tax liability is what you are required to calculate. Can I say the tax liability on 13 lakh is going to be your tax if we do not give you any relief? Please, I have taught you slab rates already in the previous chapter. Please calculate tax on 13 lakh rupees as per the applicable slab rates of assessment year 2021 that is May 20 November 20 exams. These are 100% English recordings for May 20 and November 20. So please calculate tax liability on 13 lakh. Can I say 3 lakh into 30% 90,000 and up to income of 10 lakh. This assessee is below 60 years. So up to income of 10 lakh, the tax liability is going to be 1 lakh 12,500. So that total becomes 202,500. And any student who says that 202,500 is my answer, I will enter the camera and kill you. I will enter your, you know, I'll come out of the screen that you are watching and I'll murder you. Because 202,500 is only your basic tax. After you calculate your basic tax, you have to check for, will there be any rebate? If we, if we have said that the basic tax is 202,500. Will there be any rebate? This is less than 5 lakh. And therefore, if you give rebate, then you are gone. You are gone badly. Because for rebate, you don't have to see the amount of tax. You have to see the amount of income. And because the income is exceeding the limit, rebate will not be available. Likewise, surcharge also will not get attracted because income is not more than 50 lakhs. Surcharge for individuals will come only after 50 lakhs. Effectively, can I say... All we are required to do is add health and education says at a rate of 4% and on 202, 500 after adding health and education says at 4%, the tax liability in India that you are going to get is going to be 2,10,600. So listen to me, listen to the logic now. And this is that stage of the calculation where you have to pay maximum attention. Maximum focus, maximum attention should be on this part because this is the only thing that I have to teach you under unilateral relief. Listen to me very, very carefully. What is the total income in India? 13 lakh rupees. Can I say this 13 lakh includes 8 lakh Indian income, 5 lakh foreign income? And this 13 lakh has been taxed in India at the applicable slab rates. First, 250 basic exemption, 0%. Next, 250, 5%. Next, 5 lakh, 20%. And the balance, 3 lakh. 30% plus says, can I say therefore some portion of 13 lakh has gone in 0%, some in 5, some in 20, some in 30, total 13 lakh has gone to tax at different rates and on total 13 lakh rupees, we are getting total tax of 2 lakh 10,600. 2 lakh 10,600 is the tax calculated on 13 lakh. We can never be sure as to out of our total income of 13 lakh, which income went in which bracket? You can't say 8 lakh went in 0 and 5 lakh went in 30. And you can't say 5 lakh went in 0 and 8 lakh went in 30. Because there is no name written on money. So you have to average out everything. You have to just say that full 13 lakh, full 2 lakh 10,600. And therefore, our next step is the most important step. That step is known as the average rate of tax in India. Average rate of tax in India. This 13 lakh, some amount out of 13 lakh has gone in 0, some at 5, some at 20, some at 30, but on net basis, this is my tax. 
that means on an average can i say 210600 is the tax that i am paying on 13 lakh and therefore my average rate is going to be my tax liability upon my income in 200 that is 2 lakh 10600 divided by 13 lakhs into 100 two decimals please find out then i will explain further two decimals 2 lakh 10600 divided by 13 lakhs into 100 can i say 16.20% 16.2% and this please listen to me is the rate of tax in india that way in india it is 05 2030 but we have to take this as the rate of tax in india this is your rate of tax in india average rate of tax in india 16.2 in a way that if you pick up 13 lakh on your calculator and you apply 16.2% you will directly get this answer that means in india your 13 lakh has suffered a tax at 16.2% that means in india your 8 lakh also has suffered tax at 16.5% 16.2% and 5 lakh has also suffered tax at 16. 2% you pick up your calculator you do 8 lakh into 16.2% then you do 5 lakh into 16.2% if you add both of them you will get your 2 lakh 10600 because 13 lakh into 16.2 is mathematically same as 8 lakh into 16.2 plus 5 lakh into 16.2 out of this the tax of 16.2 which you have paid on 8 lakh you are not going to get any relief for that because that you are paying only in india the tax on 8 lakh has been paid only in india then obviously you are not going to get any relief for that tax but if we talk about 5 lakh have you paid tax in india yes at what rate we don't know in which slab 5 lakh will go and therefore we are taking average rate what is the average rate of tax in india 16.2 effectively we can say that in india on 5 lakh you have paid tax at 16.2% and on that same 5 lakh in the foreign country also you have paid tax at 20% so the next step is basically just to take the foreign rate and let me tell you let me tell you the foreign rate has to be has to be and always has to be given to you in the question if the foreign rate is not given to you in the question write a note to the examiner dear examiner you are a complete idiot my malayali students my south students call it mandan potan durantam disaster dear examiner dear examiner i pray that your children appear for more difficult exams than chartered accountancy because you are asking me silly questions you are not required to know the income tax rate of any country it has to be given to you in the question and in my question also 20% has to be or has been given to you finally we will decide now at what rate you are going to get your relief which is what i told you before i started my explanation indian tax or foreign tax out of the two whichever is lower you are going to get relief at lower of the two rates which in this example is 16.2% so what is your task Indian tax average out foreign tax given choose whichever is lower and finally you have reached that stage of your life where you can calculate relief under section 91 finally you have reached there where you can calculate relief under section 91 doubly taxed income relief under section 91 will be doubly taxed income Included in NTTI, doubly taxed income included in NTTI into the lower of the two rates which you have already chosen at 16.2 percent. 16.2 percent is going to be the rate at which you are going to be provided relief. But last question, this 16.2 percent will apply. on what amount 8 lakhs 5 lakhs 13 lakhs none of them 8 lakhs 5 lakhs 
13 lakhs none of them on what amount this is your income on what amount you will be getting relief please understand that on 8 lakh rupees you have paid tax only in one country that is india and here you will get relief only if that income has been included in ntti on 5 lakh rupees you have paid tax in india as well as that country and because that is your income that has suffered double tax in india at a rate of 16.2 in that country at a rate of 20 percent out of the two whichever is lower that is 5 lakh into 16.2 percent rupees 81,000 is going to be your relief 5 lakh into 16.2 just confirm this amount 5 lakh into 16.2 percent 81,000 rupees is going to be your relief doubly taxed income included in NTTI that means that amount which has been subjected to tax in both countries only on that much amount we will be getting relief and the logic is simple tax over here or tax over there whichever is lower after this there is going to be a final step but this final step that is your final tax liability you will be doing this only 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 and only if asked only if you are asked otherwise no if the question is calculate relief under section 91 this is the end of your question do not show your knowledge examiner does not have that much knowledge he will be very angry when he is checking your paper he is not even paid well and therefore do not show knowledge if the question says calculate relief you will stop at 81,000 if the question says calculate final tax liability then only you will do this what will be your final calculation if you were not getting any relief can I say 210,600 should have been your tax liability if there was no relief if there was no relief 210,600 would have been your liability but we have decided to give you relief how much relief 81,000 final tax liability will be the tax at step 2 minus the relief in step 6 that is 210,600 minus 81,000 rupees 210,600 minus 81,000 rupees 129,600 is going to be your final tax liability only if asked and you have to be very careful about this because especially if it is an objective question then anything can happen with you supposedly in an objective question same data is given and the question is calculate final tax calculate final tax you do all your steps correctly you have done 13 lakh correctly 210 600 correctly you've done 16.2 you've chosen lower also correctly in fact your 81,000 answer has also come which is the right answer and out of the four options that are given in the question 81,000 is one of the options the moment you see 81,000 on the question paper you will be so excited in life and you will end up choosing 81,000 as the right answer what you have done is disaster my south students call it durantham disaster because the question has asked you final tax and 129,600 is also one of the options this is going to be your correct answer. So if the question is calculate relief, then you have to stop at 81,000 and that's your final answer. And if the question is calculate final tax, then you have to do this step and this will be your final answer. You get marks for answering what is asked. You don't get marks for showing knowledge. Be very careful as to what is asked and answer that because let me tell you, any student who does not know the question obviously does not know the answer if you don't know what is the question really for final tax then your answer is 100% wrong be very very careful because we have seen cases where students have lost marks only because they have not read the question properly I do not want this to happen with any of my students and together we will work to achieve what we want and regularly I will be telling you about throughout these English recordings I will regularly be telling you where you can go wrong and how you can go wrong and how you can avoid going wrong 
how you can save some marks i will be regularly guiding you about the same i do this in my hindi recordings also i am doing that in my english recordings also the duration may be little different obviously it cannot be 100% same it is not the same video where we are only adding sound separately no we are not doing that we are not doing any dubbing out here it is separately recorded so english hindi mix has already been separately recorded and 100% english is being separately recorded only for south students any person who has knowledge of hindi is advisable or it is advised that you go for the mix recordings if you do not understand hindi there is a difficulty then only you will or you should go for these recordings ultimately choice is yours coverage is same everything taught in both recordings will be same only the duration can change because explanation depends on what language we are doing so that was your first example as far as unilateral relief is concerned logic is tax over here or tax over there whichever is lower now that we are done with our first example i want to do with you a little more difficult example let me go to example number 2 concept is understood but now some more learning about unilateral relief let us understand what is unilateral relief under double taxation relief with the help of second example once again there is an assessee called mr x who is a resident and age 35 years so that you know that basic exemption is going to be 2 lakh 50000 once again like last time he is giving you data about his incomes financial data he has earned income in india rupees 10 lakh so in my first example it was 8 lakh now i am changing it it is 10 lakh i am not asking for your permission i am changing it and then once again he has income in country a that is rupees 8 lakh so i think till now the example is appearing completely same or similar to our previous example only that 8 lakh and 5 lakh have become 10 lakh and 8 lakh respectively otherwise things are same in that country a on this 8 lakh rupees he has paid 20% tax that means till now also again example is same except the income numbers everything is same okay once again india does not have a double taxation avoidance agreement with that country once again there is no dtwa between india and that country so once again it becomes same there is no dtwa between india and that country so if you observe carefully everything is same except the total of 13 lakh has become total of 18 lakh if you see carefully otherwise x is same resident is same i have kept age also same i have kept country a also same tax rate also same no dtwa only these amounts are changed now i will give you the addition to my example the addition to my example is slightly this much that the 8 lakh that he has earned in country a this is income in the nature of royalty on copyrights 8 lakh is in the nature of royalty on copyrights and today i am not teaching you i am telling you when this chapter will come actually i will be teaching you that in our income tax act in deductions under chapter 6a there is a section 80 qqb as per which if an assessee has earned royalty income the assessee is eligible for chapter 6a deduction under section 80 qqb subject to a maximum of rupees 3 lakh so if this was only 1 lakh then our deduction would have been 1 lakh but the royalty income is 8 lakh so our deduction will be restricted to a maximum of 3 lakh and remember that this deduction will be taken only against 8 lakh such deductions are called income related deduction which can be taken only against that particular income you can't take deduction of 3 lakh against 10 lakh such a deduction can be taken strictly against that particular income if it is a deduction like atc life insurance ppf or atd medical insurance or atg donation which is an expenditure related deduction that you can take against whichever income you want but 
this is an income specific deduction and therefore this deduction can be taken only against that particular income this is the only extra information as far as information is concerned question will give you only this much that deduction of 3 lakh will be available you are required to know but i will give you benefit of doubt today because i have not yet finished deductions under chapter 6a only after i finish deductions under chapter 6a i will expect you to know and congratulations you are learning from a professor who is going to teach you ipcc topics also in ca final pgbp capital gains everybody does but i will be doing ifos also house property clubbing set of chapter 6a deductions also i am going to be doing with you people then day i will teach you about this 3 lakh today i am telling you against 8 lakh you will be eligible for 3 lakh if we remove this extra information everything else is same so basically this time we have 10 lakh and 8 lakh that 8 lakh is royalty against which we are eligible for 3 lakh rupees deduction with this much extra information let us understand about unilateral relief once again do not forget whenever we give relief your first step is going to be check whether double taxation has taken place because if double taxation has not taken place there is no question of relief relief will be available only if double taxation has taken place so is there a double taxation once again let's discuss can i say 8 lakh or oh, sorry 10 lakh is taxable only in india no double tax but 8 lakh has been taxable in india or will be taxable in india principle of residence country a already taxed the question has told you principle of source when the same person on the same income is paying tax twice can i say double taxation has happened we cannot give bilateral relief because there is no double taxation avoidance agreement between the two countries and therefore our only option is unilateral relief just check one thing if the assessee is resident everything else has already been checked is the assessee resident yes can i say everything else has already been checked there is income outside india there is tax outside india there is no double taxation avoidance agreement and therefore the rcc will be eligible for unilateral relief what is the logic of unilateral relief tax over there or tax over here whichever is lower tax in india or tax abroad whichever is lower and now we also know the steps that for calculating tax in india we will have to follow three steps that is total income tax liability average rate of tax so because we are now doing the same thing again you should increase your speed a bit so what's our first step we will have to calculate net taxable total income we will have to calculate net taxable total income please help me with the amount of net taxable total income i understand you are watching a video so that way you will not be able to speak you can only listen to me And that is why sometimes we feel that a live face-to-face -face class has got its own charm. No problem. NTTI. Any student saying 18 lakh rupees durantam disaster because you don't pay tax on gross total income. You are going to pay tax on net taxable total income. While your gross total income is 18 lakh, it has been informed to you. Because you did not know, I told you, no. Then what is the problem? It has been informed to you that chapter 6 A T Q Q B is available. Accordingly, the net taxable total income is going to be only rupees 15 lakh. And on this 15 lakh, what is going to be your tax in India if you don't get any relief? If you don't get any relief, what is tax? Because relief will later on be subtracted what is tax if we don't give you any relief what is going to be your tax liability in india kindly calculate the tax on 15 lakh as per the applicable slab rates please can i say 5 lakh will be suffering tax at 30 percent that is excess over 10 lakh 1 lakh 50 thousand and we will add 1 lakh 12 thousand 500 so your basic tax will come to 2 lakh 62 thousand 
500 and any student saying 260 to 500 will be the tax liability i will come out of your screen and i will slap you very very hard again i will speak malayalam in malayalam they say odi chitti adikyum means i will break your hands and legs 260 to 500 cannot be the final tax liability it is going to be 260 to 500 plus education says accordingly your tax liability in india will come to rupees 273000 including education says if we do not give you any relief then 273000 is going to give you or is going to be your tax liability but we have already decided that the SSE is going to be eligible for relief and how do we decide what is the logic indian tax foreign tax whichever is lower if in india on 15 lakh rupees you are paying tax of 2 lakh 73 thousand then what is your average rate of tax in india on an average at what rate you are paying tax in india 2 lakh 73 thousand divided by 15 lakh into 100 what is your average rate of tax can i say 18.2 percent that means can i say in india everything has been taxed at 18.2 including indian and foreign income as far as indian income is concerned you have to pay tax only in india so no relief we will give you relief only on your foreign income and for that we will compare your indian rate with your foreign rate in the first example i already told you what that foreign rate has to be always given if the foreign rate is not given question is wrong foreign rate 20 percent foreign rate 20 percent given to you in the question and while choosing now indian rate or foreign rate whichever is lower if you choose 18.2 as your answer you have not done anything big in life obviously 20 or 18.2 whichever is lower 18.2 percent finally we reach that stage of our life where we have to calculate relief under section 91 in fact we have already decided that this will be calculated at 18.2 percent relief under section 91 at 18.2 lower of the two you just have to decide that this 18.2 percent will apply on what amount 18.2 percent of what amount let me give you options you are very excited about mcq questions i don't know what is the reason behind that excitement because a sum which would have come for four marks five marks six marks has been by icai converted into a one or two mark mcq mcq is not going to save your time it is going to increase your effort those questions are such questions which you should be able to answer even without options but I am still giving you option because you are excited about MCQs. So option 1, 18 lakh or ABCD, 18 lakh, 2, 15 lakh, 3, foreign income, 8 lakh, D, 5 lakh, 18 lakh, 15 lakh, 8 lakh, 5 lakh. We have to choose. Anybody who desires to do good in MCQs, which is all of us. All of us want to do good in MCQs. If out of 30 marks, we are able to. Our target should be to score at least 25 plus in MCQs. I already have a book of more than 1500 MCQs. Very difficult MCQs. 10% may be easy, but 90% are very, very difficult. And I am still working on the book and adding some more till november 19 exams i had 1500 i am adding as many as i can but i can't promise the number as of now this is the question right in front of you if we want to do good in mcqs there is a theory called the theory of elimination any answer which is definitely the wrong answer cancel that answer so if you come and observe the incomes do you really understand that under all circumstances this 10 lakh will definitely not be eligible whatever whatever be your answer indian income not eligible can i say 18 lakh and 15 lakh both include that 10 lakh and because both include that 10 lakh definitely definitely 18 and 15 are eliminated and finally the options are between 8 lakh and 5 lakh on what amount 
you will get relief. And how have I made my MCQs? How have my, I made my MCQs? One of the answers is the right answer. That is the option, one of the correct options. And I have worked very hard for the wrong answers. So, if I give you options like one correct answer and the remaining three is 10 crore, 20 crore, 30 crore, then a very, very foolish person will also understand that there is no amount in crores and therefore the fourth answer is the correct answer. But I have not done it that way. I have taken this as an option, calculated relief at 18.2%. I have taken this as an option, calculated relief at 18.2%. And in both those options, I have calculated the final tax liability. So, the tax in India, 2,73,000 minus relief on 8 lakh or relief on 5 lakh. Totally four options. Only one of them is the correct option. First, you have to check what is the question. Final tax or relief amount. And then when you calculate relief on which amount, 8 lakh or 5 lakh, everything will be tested in your MCQ question. MCQ is going to increase your burden, not reduce your burden. Let me give you some bad news. Let me give you some bad news. So then, so then, 8 lakh or 5 lakh. I wish we could have discussed with each other face to face. We could have spoken with each other. But then, in video lecture, only I can talk. You just have to listen. So those students who are thinking 8 lakhs, their answer is basically, I think this much, that foreign income 8 lakh, give relief on 8 lakh. Foreign income 8 lakh, that country, you have paid tax on 8 lakh. Then give relief. But wait, wait. Why is 8 lakh the wrong answer? Why is 5 lakh the correct answer? Because relief will be available on the doubly taxed income included in NTTI agreed that in the foreign country you have paid tax on 8 lakh but when you came to India against that 8 lakh you ended up taking a chapter 6 a deduction of 3 lakh and therefore when we calculated your 15 lakh NTTI that 15 lakh on which you have calculated your tax liability this 15 lakh does not include 8 lakh rupees this 15 lakh includes 10 lakh of Indian income and only 5 lakh of foreign income because out of 8 lakh you have taken 3 lakh chapter 6 a deduction. What is the breakup of this 15? Indian income 10 lakh, foreign income 5 lakh. Out of 8 lakh, 3 lakh you have taken deduction and in India you have not paid. Agreed you have paid tax in the foreign country but you paid only one. Double taxation relief is available when you pay tax twice. Or let me explain in a different way. Let me explain in a different way. Let's divide our 8 lakh in two parts. Okay. Out of the two parts, 5 lakh is definitely eligible for relief. That even those students whose answer was 8 lakh, that it included 5. So 5 lakh is definitely eligible. But let's talk about 3 lakh. Agreed you have paid tax in the foreign country. But in India, you have taken the deduction. And included in NTTI is only rupees 5 lakh. Accordingly, only 5 lakh rupees will be eligible for relief and your relief is going to be rupees 91,000 and final tax liability you will be doing only if asked. If asked, what is going to be your final tax liability? Final tax is going to be tax in step 2 that is 2,73,000 minus the relief in step 6 that is 91,000. That way, explanation is over. Final answer that way is irrelevant but I just will give you the answer and tell you or teach you how a difficult MCQ can be made. 1 lakh 82,000. Now listen, if I make an MCQ question, how will I make it? I will give you the same sum and I will give you options of calculating final tax. What is the final tax liability? Can I say correct answer is 1 lakh 82? So this definitely has to be one of the options. What will be my wrong options? Not 10 crore, 20 crore or 30 crore. Otherwise, everybody knows that 182 is the answer. My options are going to be option 1, 5 lakh into 18.2. This is my option. That's correct for relief but incorrect for final tax liability. Option 2, I will calculate 8 lakh into 18.2. Make that as an option. Option 3, I will subtract 273 minus 91 and that's the correct answer. Option 4, I will subtract 273 minus 8 lakh into 18.2, which was wrong relief and therefore wrong final tax. This is how I have made my MCQs. And you be very, very careful about what is asked in the question because 
Last time I am explaining this because you have taken relief of this 3 lakh under chapter 6a and in 15 lakh you don't have 3 lakh. It is not included in your NTTI. It is not included in NTTI. Relief will be available only for the amount which is included in NTTI which is rupees 5 lakh. Having said that, one last small little piece of explanation. This concept became applicable because this is an income related deduction which can be taken only against this 8 lakh. You are not allowed to take this 3 lakh against 10 lakh. That is not allowed. This is specifically related to the income. And therefore, we can say that 3 was definitely subtracted from 8 and therefore 5. But sometimes there may be an assessee who has other deductions like ATC, ATD, ATG donation, ATU, gone case. By the time we finish taxation, most people are ATU cases. We may be having those deductions. Listen, are they specifically related to this income? No. That means can we say that we have taken only against 8 lakh? No. In such cases, what ICAI has done, ICAI in all its suggested answers takes those deductions against the Indian income and brings full foreign income in your eligible amount. Full foreign income. But that is possible only if it is not directly related to 8 lakh. Any chapter 6a deduction which is directly related to the foreign income will be subtracted. Which is directly related will be subtracted. And anything which is not directly related with this income, you can subtract against Indian income and you can bring your full foreign income here and take relief on the full amount. But then one more possibility here is, let's talk about this case only, 18 lakhs, 18 lakhs. Your other deductions, that means not related directly with 8 lakh, otherwise that has to be definitely subtracted. Your other deductions are more than 10 lakh. So we will give first preference against 10 lakh, we will adjust everything. Say we have donations and we have ATG of 11 lakh. We can adjust only 10 maximum against this. Then remaining 1 lakh, we have no choice. We will have to adjust and we will bring 7 lakh. So when it is directly related, subtract everything and bring the net amount. When it is not directly related, give first preference here. If left, then subtract here and that will become your amount eligible for relief. So be very, very.